It's a little bit funny This feeling inside It's not one of those I can easily hide I don't want to say much But a boy, if I did I'd tell you so much About this guy called Chill Don't teach your grandmother to suck eggs. वो उसकी बहुत favourite होती है। In fact, हम लोग सब शुरू शुरू में समझ में नहीं आता था। She was really mixed. She was really caught between two cultures, huh? Yeah, very, 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 very. She had a very weird sense of humour, very British sense of humour. तो वो Indian लोगों को अक्सर वो Indian लोग उसको समझ नहीं पाते थे, appreciate नहीं कर पाते थे। He would curse out Indians a lot more than British people. He he affiliated more with the Brits. Oh, I asked him once. I asked him that uh, if there's a war between England and uh, India, where would you be? He said, British. <laughs> I would be with Britain. I said, okay. Got on the wrong side. She had this very, um, like, you know, he was a very um, driven person. So he would do things that he would decide to do. He was always doing what he thought was right and he was doing it. And sometimes it was actually um, helpful if he did not do it that way and did it the other way or the proper way, something like that. So one of the things that he would do is, uh, he would, for example, while writing a project proposal, he would take an Excel, like he'll be op working on Excel, but he will sit down with a calculator. He'll put in the figures, then he'll calculate with his calculator and they put in the total figures, but he will not put in, in a formula. And we tried telling him many a times and we have also faced problems because of that, because like, you know, sometimes budgets were passed with like, you know, because his calculation on the calculator was wrong, so lesser than what you should have been, was got passed and all of that. So those kind of problems are all. But every time you try to go and try to tell him that Shiv, maybe you should put in the formula, he would invariably come up and say, don't teach your grandmother to suck eggs. Now, initially we never understood what sucking eggs was. Like, you know, we thought it must be something, another one of his sex thing that he's talking about and bringing his grandmother in. It's only later that we found out that it means like, no, no, don't try and teach me things kind of a thing. One day Shiv walks into my office and he says, I'm Shiv. And I said, yes, so? And then we got along, we went out for lunch, we had a long chat. And um, by the end of it, he had convinced me that um, we need to really start scaling up the MSM work in uh, Chennai. And also try and really make sure that we were not working in isolation. We needed to, uh, in his own words, connect the dots and bring everything together so that we can be much more powerful. When I look back, without him, number one, the scale that we are speaking about in India with MSM would not have happened. That is important, but much more importantly, the connection between the different groups that we're working on MSM issues, which those little drops of water coming together and becoming a mighty wave, that wouldn't have happened without him, without his leadership. I'm shocked when I walked into this room and I, I realized that there were so many of you I don't know that I've either not met, maybe I heard your name or... So um, this speaks again to the impact that Shiv has and had up until the last few few minutes of his life. I, I'm, I'm based here in Bangkok, and I had been given the opportunity to facilitate a meeting of the Greater Mekong on MSM and transgender and HIV. I, I knew I was very nervous. I didn't know if I could do a good job or not. I had to get through it. And, and during the end of the second session in the morning of the first day, um, when this gentleman, this um, Indian gentleman, with a black shirt, um, raised his hand uh, for about the sixth time that morning and said, excuse me, but can I just say one more thing? And um, I was like, it was clear that he was so well-spoken, so well-regarded, so intelligent, so on top of everything that was going on, and clearly one of the biggest leaders, oh, I won't say the biggest queens, but the biggest leaders and a big queen too. And I realized that what am I going to do? We have to get going on the program. And I said, no, sorry, and went on. And I thought, oh my god, <laughs> I'm going to lose this job. I'll never work again in this city. Um, and of course, we became wonderful friends at the next, at the next break outside smoking cigarettes. I first met Shiv at the Kobe AIDS conference. My first impression of him was he's, a, he's arrogant, a bit of an ass, 
Um, he was chairing a, a satellite session on MSM and HIV. But what really came through was his passion, um, his demand to be heard. But it wasn't for just his voice. It was the voice for the MSM and transgender people throughout the region. I met you first time in the Christmas of 1995. Uh, what really uh, caught my attention was the way he was dressed up, all black, top to bottom, everything. And then uh, also his boots. So I asked him, she, do you use these boots for some other purposes? Because, you know, they are really combat boots, like, you know, steel toe boots and all that. He said, these are my protection. Like, if there is any problem, I could actually fight back. And I was struggling with my own personality uh, related to masculinity and all that. And I didn't want to be bullied by anybody. So I thought, this is the best thing what I can get. And uh, so I actually went to the shop and bought uh, myself uh, my first pair of Caterpillar boots. Uh, steel toe and I feel very confident afterwards because I thought if there is any fight I could actually fight back with this. My initial like you know the first few years with Shiv was it was operating at two levels uh, at one level there was this deep sense of respect for him which meant that I would actually heed to a lot of advice and stuff that he was giving me but it, there was also this underlying conflict that I was constantly having with Shiv and that uh, involved my insistence that this kind of work, including HIV work, must emphasize on LGBT rights, human rights, as the primary focus, and the health rights come as a like you know as a secondary to that focus. And Shiv's entire thing was that you save lives first, save people, protect their health, and then once they are okay, they can start talking about rights. And we we had this long, silent battle of whatever you call it, intellect, wit, whatever, that went on for many years. And I mean, you know, again, in hindsight, there is not, nothing to claim like, you know, he was right or I was right. Maybe bo we both were right. I was asked him, what do you want to impress Because women like us will get very impressed. What is Shivanandan Khan? So he said that when I am really charmed and you will see it then. You will see it. I said, when will I get to see? I said, when will I get to see? When will I get to see? When I was in round 9, the CCM meeting was going on. And then Sujata Rao and Sarp were sitting there. And we were all sitting in the meeting. And suddenly, we heard that Shiv and Arif and three or four people were coming. In 10 minutes, he came and went and went. And everybody was sitting there. Absolutely. Everybody in the room was sitting there. मैं अभी नाम नहीं ले रही हूँ लेकिन काफी बड़े-बड़े नाम थे जो आम तौर पर जिसके सामने लोग इसीलिए बात नहीं कर सकते हैं और मीटिंग खत्म हो गई जैसे हम बाहर गए तो शिव ने पीछे मुड़ के बोला कि you saw me you saw my charm तो मेरे पीछे सुजाता रहा थे उसने बोला कि हाँ she also saw and I also saw project approved we were speaking to a very high-level panel in London. We had ministry, ministers of foreign affairs, we had ministers of health, ministers of development, and it was being hosted by DFID. And the room was maybe accommodating 150 people, but there was like 250 people. The room was packed, and Shiv gave his talk. And everybody in that room was absolutely silent, listening to every word, including me, and I think we were all just captured by his wisdom, his passion, his clarity, and above all, I think, his honesty, because he just was himself, and how powerful it was when he was talking about uh, rights for all, on gay and lesbian issues, on transgender issues, and the importance of bringing everybody on board. It's just awesome, it was beautiful. We were the first batch of his training. It was really wonderful. He was a wonderful trainer, a fantastic human being, and a most wonderful guru. Before anything else, Shiv was a guru. He was a teacher. He taught you, and he taught you with dedication. He taught you so that you sustain that knowledge. So aside from everything else that Shiv was, to me, he was my teacher. He was my guru. He was one of my gurus. 
you know, rickshaw pullers, once we uh, use the rickshaw driver, uh, usually people, you know, did not say anything, you know. But he's the person who taught me, you know, after driving, how to say thanks to the rickshaw driver. So I just cannot, you know, forget all those things. What she has done for everybody in, 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 in the sector of MSM is that he has actually provided that, that initial rush of energy. And that has been possible because he has consistently worked in the region. Consistently. So what Shiv for me is, is, is exactly an idea. Shiv has been an idea which can absolutely do impossible things. How is it possible? 36 projects, new CBOs within three months. And he just said, yes, we can do it. And if we can do 36, we, tomorrow we can do 360. Something what he cannot imagine, he would put up. I remember some time back, Aditya was saying that he had such a large vision and he would tell us this little component. Actually, that was so true. He made all of us work for a certain component to ensure that the whole thing comes out so beautifully. And that's what Shiv is for us. I think Shiv is an idea, an idea which will remain even though when Shiv is not there with us. Shiv uh, or Mataji, that's what I used to call him, uh, he used to hate that. Uh, he was definitely my guru. Uh, I am who I am, where I am today because of him. So we are more like a Kalavya, the disciple who never formally really got trained by Dronacharya or the Shiv. We are more like that. If anything good in us, it's because of him. And if there is anything which is not so good, it's because of our own mistakes. I must say that. उसने शायद अपने बारे में कभी सोचा ही नहीं मतलब यहाँ के पास का जो गार्डन भी है वो भी शिव नहीं बनवाया एंड ही ऑलवेज यूज टू फाइट कि हमने ये जो है गार्डन बनाया है फॉर वेमेन एंड चिल्ड्रेन सो मेन शुड नॉट एंटर वेमेन शुड होल्ड द की एंड इट इज देयर प्राइवेट स्पेस ऐसा आदमी था कि अब दूसरा आदमी कोई पैदा नहीं हो सकता है शादी हो कोई काम हो गाड़ी देना बीमारी हो जाए तो उसमें गाड़ी दे देना है कोई शादी ब्याह पूरा जिम्मेदारी ले लेना पूरी जिम्मेदारी उसकी लेना गाड़ी नहीं होती थी बस का इंतजाम भी कर देते थे कई ऐसे टाइम पड़ा कि बस का इंतजाम अपने पास से पैसा दे दिया और कोई भी काम होता था मोहल्ले में देखिए फिर कितना काम है बमपुल बनवा दिया सड़क बनवा दी पूरी जिस घर में टूटे हुए थे उसमें अने स्लेप करवा दिया खपड़े पड़े हुए थे उस पर पूरी जब स्लेप करवा दी चादर चुड़वा दी बहुत काम किया उन्होंने शी वॉज वेरी प्राउड ऑफ टेलिंग द हिस्ट्री ऑफ Nas Foundation International with that it was born out of anger and he didn't want that anger to go away he didn't want that anger to die uh, there was a f close friend of Shiv Navir who died of uh, AIDS and um, he was a gay person Pakistani person corporation was taking care of Navir in last days and Navir was very disturbed with that because they used to serve him pork and uh, so he used to continuously complain to the corporation, corporation that uh, the corporation is not very culturally sensitive. Uh, so they approached Shiv that if he can take care of Nazir. So Shiv took care of Nazir in his last days. And when 
नज़ीर का बरियल हो रहा था तो दे वॉज नो बडी प्रजेंट शिव वॉज द ओनली पर्सन एंड ही फ्लू सम इमाम फ्राम मोरक्को और समवे कि टू डू द लास्ट नमाज नन ऑफ द इमाम्स इन लंडन वेर रेडी टू कम फॉर नजीज बरियल एंड नो बडी एल्स वॉज प्रजेंट बिकॉज इट वॉज अ डबल स्टिगमा गे एंड डाइंग ऑफ एज सो एवरीबडी डिसो एंड शिव से यूज टू से दैट जब वो नज़ीर को कब्र में उतार रहा था तब उसको बहुत गुस्सा आ रहा था कि एटलीस्ट वी डोंट डिजर्व दिस काइंड ऑफ डेथ सो आइसोलेटेड एंड दैट इज हाउ नाज फाउंडेशन वॉज बॉर्न यू वी हियर एंड ही स्पोक अबाउट हिज ड्रीम ऑफ हैविंग ए बिग कॉन्फ्रेंट नो बिग कंसल्टेशन विद गेज एंड ट्रांसजेंडर्स इन इन इंडिया ऑफ ऑल द कम्युनिटीज कमिंग टूगेदर एंड डिसाइडिंग ऑन द फ्यूचर ऑफ एच and and gay men and MSM and I said you know she we're going to talk about problems with governments and problems with donors we should invite the donors and we should invite the governments to be here in one room and consult with them you know hear their perspective no that's been done before this is not something we want to do. we want the community we want a community meeting you know and we had very loud arguments here you know and he said yo you stupid Jew what do you know you know it was really 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 very heavy and slowly you know we found each other and we had this amazing amazing consultation in september 2006 in delhi risk and responsibilities shiv and i were sandwiched between a mulla and a crazy arya samaj preacher you know so uh, shiv's uh, warning to me was don't provoke them okay we played by ear but don't mention the number of partners you have you know we were preparing so i said okay but hardly had we gone 5 minutes into the interview this mulla suddenly took out a book out of nowhere and started waving it in front of me and shiv and started shouting at us that do you know i have this book which says you homosexuals have hundreds of diseases I didn't know what to, I'm looking at Shiv. He's looking because this is out of the blue. So I don't know. I had my file of facts, the thick black file of facts. So I suddenly took it up, and Shiv was already alarmed. He said, "Oh God, this mad queen is going to do something stupid." So I waved it in front of the mullah, and I said, "I have this book which says heterosexuals have thousands of diseases." <laughs> and Shiv got up and started clapping, and the whole audience started clapping, and these two had to keep their mouth shut. When Lucknow incident happened, um, he completely authorized me to do everything, like including the press releases, talking to political parties, NGOs, media, uh, doing interviews with press on behalf of NFI. And I was not even a staff; I was just like a volunteer trying to help NFI. But uh, I do remember I asked Shiv that Shiv, do you trust me to handle this thing? I needed to know this before I go ahead and and do anything. He said, "I trust you so much because I know if I am there, I would also do exactly the same." Now, during the Lucknow incident, what ended up happening is Shiv kept doing this whole number of, um, "Oh, I have to come back right now to India to like you know face the system and all of that." While for the initial maybe ten days, twelve days, there was shit erupting everywhere, like you know, and it was hitting the fan. there was enough problem with the police there was enough problem at with turning the media there was enough problem with trying trying to ensure that other social uh, movements and groups actually come out in support of what they were doing and overturn that initial tide of like you know gay sex racket prostitution club or whatever nonsense they were talking about all of that and then shiv kept insisting that um, he will be coming back to india because you know his workers and people that he where from his organization were in jail and all of that and he was saying this even as the paper was talking about like you know foreign hand in prostitution racket british guy and all of so i remember there was one time when and for sure our mobiles were being like you know tapped and tra- tracked at that point in time so i remember at one point he called up on my mobile and i told him like you know shiv there is 
enough problem at hand without he having to deal with you going to like you, know, you being arrested and going to jail and having to deal with that as well we are trying to do the best we can let us finish it here and it is only after things settle here you come back what shiv however did is like you know, and i think that that shows like you know he really cared at a humane level not not only as somebody who's running this big organization he had complete trust on me and aditya to handle that issue and and that was very very beautiful for us because you know we could just do it as if we are doing for ourselves and that was possible because he had given that kind of trust to me and aditya at that difficult situation of his life every night he would call up arif's mom and would speak with her for half an hour uh, he was doing that without interpreter he was speaking in his um, like you know broken hindi very little in, uh, like you know english very little hindi kind of broken uh, this thing and arif's mom of course did not speak any english but she would but she would every day call up arif's mom and it, that was like you know meticulous for the entire 47 days that Arif was in jail. Not a single day that he would not call up and talk to her for at least half an hour, and that was amazing. I mean, you know, that was like. Hindi में बात करते थे हम सब. उन्हें हिंदी आती थी. हाँ. ठीक ठाक आती थी. अच्छा हाँ. अच्छा कासी आती थी. He kept everybody's hopes up, even as everything turned very like you know seemed very dark and. it for some time it looked like there is no more hope uh, like uh, people will be in jail and there's nothing we can do and organizations have to be shut down or whatever we were doing whatever was legally possible but he kept hope hopes up i mean you know he was always encouraging he was always this thing sometimes he could be a little frustrating and silly by insisting that he would come back and at that time he had to be scolded into like you know changing his plans but um, he he kept our hopes up He was great at that point in time. What I remember about Shiv the most is the commitment to leadership, um, but his ability to inspire. I mean, he inspired people from South Asia, from to China, from the Pacific. I think what Shiv did when he came to India was that he went to the grassroots. I mean, you know, he lived with people in the slums and he lived with bastis and he met and talked with uh, all those uh, like you know. rickshaw wala schoolies etc etc and i think one thing that he actually understood very well is that this is uh, something that is not in the language of the people who were at the grassroots like you know most people did not speak that language or understand that uh, language of uh, identity of english of like you know of a certain level of education and probably that's why what he tried to do was actually make it more proletarian like bring it down to the grass level talk about their language and in their language search identity so the whole koti identity thing that he kind of tried it to try to promote and that became a very like you know conflicted and controversial area because a lot of the indian lgbt activists felt threatened by that because here was somebody from the outside who had come in who had sort of asserted an indian term and an indian identity and was promoting it in a way that actually led to a lot of people getting involved with lgbt rights movement in the initial days of his life whether it is india bangladesh or pakistan and he had gone out to meet those people absolutely at the grassroots level he had that beautiful very beautiful way to connect with the absolutely grassroots level and in intellectuals it was like a very nice weaving together the other thing that i think shiv also did consciously now in hindsight this is not something that appeared at that moment in time was he took this very non rights based approach to begin with you know it was all health based and we are talking about your betterment your empowerment for doing hiv prevention work and you know your health is important but around health he would talk about all kinds of other advocacy issues what ended up happening is that gradually the discourse on health and whatever he was talking in terms of like you know indian identities and native identities subaltern identities if you want to call it that what ended up happening is that those identities got empowered to an extent where they could enter into a dialogue of equals with those people who actually thought of and spoke of and believed in the gay identity term and he has been able to do that 
only because of his consistent love and affection for everybody who was working with him. That's how he has actually worked with everybody. In the community, in the small city, that's how he has worked. And that led, I think, by and large, if you look in the long term, this thing, over like many years, maybe 10 years or so, that led to what I would say an egalitarian environment of activism where both the subaltern and the English educated, English speaking, gay identified people could sit across as equals and strategize for both their benefits. And I think that is one of Shiv's biggest contribution to the whole uh, LGBT movement in India. After his death, I would be happy if everybody around us remember him for what he has done to the community in South Asia, also in London. In so many different parts of the world, he has actually influenced a lot of people. And these are the people who are now managing most of the program. He, ha he had very successfully managed to influence government in Pakistan, in Bangladesh, and also Afghanistan to invest in MSM sector. That was a very difficult task. Only he could actually bring people together. And now we have these programs running. His support in initial stage of Blue Band Society now has grown up in the leading LGBTI organization in Nepal. And we are doing a very great job. And the, the credit is uh, also going to the SIV also. After his loss, one thing I feel is that this whole activism is the money which has come in our activism bad that we are losing our leaders is the leadership which is so strong has become weak is there a support system for us or not I ask if this if I want to be a, a woman I want to wear a female get up and he said that it's your choice you are you and Please, uh, he suggests me to be happy what you are. So that um, that suggestion from Sib make me so inspired, and now now I become a, a transgender. What she has done for me personally was that when I when I was actually struggling with my own sexuality, when when it was difficult for me to put myself into any one particular box, he had he had given me that kind of support. He started coming to Pakistan in the late 1990s uh, when nobody talked about MSM. Uh, but Shiv had the courage, uh, he had the desire uh, to come and try to explore the opportunities in Pakistan for MSM work. You know, Shiv started intervening in Pakistan and Afghanistan around the same time in Afghanistan. Uh, you know, he worked with the Ministry of Health and with various stakeholders and the kind of work he's established in Afghanistan. I'm sure in the next two to three years, we'll have similar kind of result that we have seen very recently in Pakistan and, you know, 10 to 15 years back that he delivered in Bangladesh, which was an equally difficult environment at that point in time. I was very curious, Afghanistan, कंट्री में कैसे सुझा? तभी भी उन्होंने कहा था मुझे कि 99 में मैंने गुजरात साइड ज्वाइन किया था। तभी उन्होंने कहा था कि 99 में आपके गुजरात में पांच लक्ष्य थे, नहीं था ना? वैसे ही अफगानिस्तान में अभी नहीं है, लेकिन आज के पांच साल के बाद देखना कितने? Shiv is Shiv is somebody who cannot be replaced. I don't think so. His technical expertise, maybe that can be replaced. But Shiv cannot be replaced. You know, his humor, his bitchiness, his, his passion, he can't be replaced. Mm, one more thing I would like to talk about Shiv is that I think whatever he did, uh, he had that ability to have a long-term vision and then break down the path to that vision into these small steps. And he would work very hard on each one of those small steps. So 
by themselves they may have looked like why the hell is he doing that what does he want out of this what does this mean why should this matter why is it important like you know small steps but i think he was he constantly had a larger vision if i was a poet but then again no or a man who makes loud statements in a travel in show if i have to tell shiv through a story i would say a very handsome man wearing long coat absolutely like a jadugar i know it's not much but it's the best i can do my gift is my song and shiv this one's for you a nice boots an apple computer which i really liked he used to come to different small cities charm the people in that city set up the programs there and now those people become completely independent that's what she has done can it be that it was all so simple then or is time rewritten every line and if we had a chance to do it all again tell me would we could we memories memories may be beautiful and yet what's to painful to remember we simply choose to forget so it's the laughter the laughter will remember whenever we remember the way we were the way we were the way we are Thank you, Shiv.